Question of the day, what is your favorite condensed game? So a game that's distilled from big roots down to a smaller version. So think like Raccoon Tycoon from Brass or Railroad, uh, Railroad Rivals from like the train pushing cubes games, right? So think about any of those classic style games that have been distilled down and let me know in the comments below what your favorite distilled version of the game is because today we're taking a look had a game in a new series from GMT Games all about playing some of the daunting heavy games like Twilight Struggle, Paths of Glory, all those sort of things in 30 minutes. You can do it on your lunch break. Literally, you can leave this set up in a lunchroom somewhere, break room, play this game and be done. And I've tested it, the time, just to make sure, uh, you know, people put game numbers on. This one really does. It plays that fast, 30 to 45 minutes. So this is... Red Flag Over Paris. It is a game all about the 1860s, 1870s era of French history. French history is a wild time, right? You've got this era is when the story about Les Miserables was written, which was dated 30 years prior to this, but it's all sorts of just violent upheaval and stuff from the French Revolution all the way up for a long time, you know, through the imperialism of, you know, Napoleon, all this sort of stuff. It's just a fascinating era of history. And today, Let's take a look at what happens on towards the back end of this in the 1870s with red flags over red flag over Paris. Are you gonna win with the commune or are you gonna win with Versailles? Let's take a look right now. All right, this is Red Flag Over Paris set up for two players because it's either one or two players. But really, it's a two-player tug-of-war game. In fact, the point system works so much that the Versailles team has the team, as if it's like a you know soccer game, but the Versailles player has to have more military points than the commune player has political points. At the end of the final crisis phase, that point metric will take place and whoever has the most of that will win, which means you could actually win with zero points because it could be zero to negative three based on the scoring. Now, you're gonna set your reserve cubes up here in these areas. The Versailles player also has a cube pool, which means they can never run out of cubes. The commune player does not have that. The commune player can only store cubes as high as they are on their influence track here. The way that works is on your turn, you're gonna get four cards. One of them, you're going to tuck under your final crisis phase at the end of the turn. So essentially, you're going to be taking one, two, three at max rounds of three cards, and then one final crisis round in which you resolve just event cards based on what you have tucked under there. And you resolve the amount of event cards of rounds you've played. So you will not actually play all four of these. You'll play just three of them. Setup for the board works like this. The Versailles player has an influence cube in the political section over here in Royalist and Press. And then over here in the military side, the commune player has an Pierre Lachaise. I'm going to butcher all of these pronunciations, even though I play Broken Sword a whole lot. So then you've got with social movements right here. These influence cubes are how you're going to tell who owns the control of a crisis dimension. Crisis dimensions are these four sections, the orange, the green, it calls it teal, it's definitely not teal, and then the purple there. These different dimensions work slightly different. For instance, the political side and military side work differently. If you are going to remove a cube, for instance, from the political side, you would just spend an operations point to remove a cube. If you're going to do it in the political side, you have to kind of do a slight check because it's obviously a little bit more difficult, although ideas are awfully dangerous sometimes. So that's why they shipped, they shipped linen. This is an amazing story in history. So you're going to start with one final crisis card over here. If you choose to use it early, it has a negative connotation right here, but you do have four operations points to use. On your turn, you can use these cards for four things. First of all, notice the three different colors here. Neutral means either side can use the event. Red means only the red player can use the event, and blue means only the blue player can use the event. So if the red player has a blue card, they must use it for operations points or to move up their track. The way this works is, if I play this, it says, if possible, increase Prussian collaboration, then replace up to two in a pair of space. Now, that would actually be helping the red player. Excuse me, that would actually be helping the blue players. You would move this up for blue. They would get this bonus cube. But then you would place cubes where you want to. Um, then you would replace cubes that they have out there. So this would be a later game card you'd kind of want to hold probably, or at least during that um, final crisis phase. Anyway, they all play somewhat like that. You can play them for the event or you can play them for the operations points. If you were to play for the operation points, you can do a certain set of moves. You can replace cubes, first of all, or remove cubes, first of all. If it's a political, like I said, you just pull it straight off. If it's military, you count up how much presence you have. Presence means you have a cube in that location. 
how many adjacent locations you control. Adjacency is drawn by these lines over here and these arrows over here. And then plus one per control of the target space. If you already control the target space and you're trying to just completely remove the other player. And then plus one if you choose to spend at least one time, or excuse me, at most one time, an extra operations point. You can then add that to the check. So if I have a quote unquote four, I would then flip over the top card. Whatever that number is needs to be less than or equal to what I have. So a four is always going to win. But a one, you could potentially win with a one. If you ch if you do win that check, you'll pull one of their cubes off the board. That's what re replace does. You're then going to reevaluate who has control of those areas. Then once you do that, you could place. So you're going to always remove first in place. You don't have to remove, but you're always going to remove first in place. Placing is just you spend a point to add a cube. If they have a fortification or a barricade, that would be these discs that are very hard to get out there on the board, by the way. You would have to spend double the points. Now, once all three cards have been played and you tuck the one under Final Crisis, you're going to evaluate a couple things. For instance, these four spaces here are going to give a bonus to the player who controls that space. They are things like you can de-escalate, which means you can either remove two of your cubes or one of theirs and one of yours. Don't know why you would do that. Um, the removing two of yours, for instance, unless you have an objective card that says something like that. But second thing you can do is spread your influence. So if I control this space like this, let's just say I had a couple extra cubes here, I could then spread my influence from here to this area right here. Then the other option you can do is to replace one of their cubes with one of your cubes in the crisis dimension. Again, the crisis dimensions are these four sections. Then you're going to check who has control of the crisis dimensions. They will get a point, so a political point over here on this side if you control all three spaces and all three spaces over there. Political on this side, military on this side, which will change this matrix up right there. Then you're going to check to see your objective cards. And the objective cards, you're going to get four each round. You're going to, or excuse me, you're going to get two each round and discard down to one. So an objective card would be something like this. Use up to uh, control the royalist. So I would need, if I play this in my objective card, I put it secretly down here at the beginning of the round. We check objectives, control royalists. I do actually control royalists. Use up to two operations points in institutional spaces or remove one cube from the space. Whoever controls the space listed, it could be the opponent, gains the point associated with it. So I would get a green point for controlling this area. Then I get to use the bonus at the bottom. So it's just a way to kind of keep changing the math of the board before the end of the game. Now, you'll get cubes all out there. A couple things to note. You other thing you can do with your card is spend it instead to move up this track. As you move up this track, the red player gets an ability to store cubes. Otherwise, cubes received that can't be played, for instance, these bonus cubes up top, they are lost. When you use a cube, it must come from the reserve first, then up here in these areas and as you move across into these escalating tensions and stuff like that the bonus cubes will unlock if they unlock and you don't have anywhere to place them you lose them the blue player it's never an issue because they always have an infinite pool however as you move up this track you're going to give the other player a bonus same with that side you'll play this for all three rounds finish the third round and then do a final crisis round which is essentially just resolving the um, events of three of the cards that you've tucked under your final crisis card You'll evaluate controlled crisis dimensions, and then the person, again, who has that metric one, if Versailles has more military points and then the commune has political points, you win. Again, that sounds confusing until you play it and see what the math actually looks like on that. One other thing you do is at the beginning of each round, you determine initiative with one of the best looking cards I think I've ever seen in one of these games. Beautiful card. Determine initiative here by whichever player has the most political points, that player will then choose who goes first and they will choose which of these resolve in what order, etc. So that is how you play Red Sky, Red Flag over Paris. So that's Red Flag over Paris. First and foremost, the concept is what I immediately was hooked by. The idea of taking a big GMT game and playing it within one hour, 30 to 45 minutes. There's a Twilight Struggle version coming and I cannot wait for that. So, first of all, this game looks good. It looks really, really good on the table. First of all, I love GMT game covers. They feel, and this is going to sound bad, but they feel like 
really nice textbooks, the way they look. Like it, it's meant to be historical. It's not meant to be like, oh, silly cartoony art, right? It's meant to be historical, but it takes historical art from the era and uses it. So this one, the cover's great. The components are nice. Yeah, it's wood cubes and wood discs and things like that, but it just looks good. And the cards, the upgrades that GMT games have done since the first printing of Twilight Struggle that I have, and now, it's top notch. It looks so good. So like the art on the cards is great. The history on the cards is fantastic. The board looks amazing. That Paris map, so good. So this one really works in the theme of the political sphere of things and the military sphere of things. And it really abstracts those out in very good ways. So for instance, if you're going to remove a cube from the political side, it's easy. You can just remove this thought from over here. But doing a battle, it's a lot harder, right? So that to me is just great. The way this takes the concept that it purports to take, purports, purports to take the idea of taking this kind of heavy uh, area control, spheres of influence style game and distilling it works. So the game looks great. It plays really smooth. The tug of war point value thing I love. I absolutely think this is a winner game. And what it does is it means it makes me just be cannot wait for the Twilight Struggle version this because the Cold War is my favorite era of history. It's one of the most influential points in history of all time and we're still seeing you know the remnants of it all today. You know, it's basically it's, it's basically just World War One stretched all the way out for a long time is what it is but it's fascinating. Anyway this one works. If you like area control games, this one works. If you like card driven games, this one works. I love how the card driven actions work. I love how short it is that you play three of your four cards, you tuck one for later, you play three of those four cards, and you might think you have it until that last round and that other pro opponent just maneuvers just enough to where you lose your control and you lose your influence in those places. It's beautiful. It's a great game. If you like historical games, 100% pick this up. If you like GMT games, but you're trying to get them played more, 100% pick this one up. Just for the time alone, it works. It does its thing. Red Sky over, or Red Flag, I keep saying Red Sky. Red Flag over Paris. Beautifully fun game. Cannot wait to see more from this series. So, I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. At Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you.